Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up, Winning Cures Everything. College football gambling pick segment for week number nine. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we got a lot of games to get to. Let's go on and tell you how bad we were last week. I went two and five last week, lost one hundred twenty dollars and forty five cents. Chris went three and five, lost one hundred nine dollars and nine cents on the season. I am twenty five and thirty nine. I am down nineteen point seven units, and we are more than halfway through the season. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing. Chris, however, twenty one and twenty five. He's down seven point one three units. He can get that back. I'm gonna be working my rear end off to try and get 19 units back. Maybe. Just saying. We'll keep uh, at it. We'll keep at it, brother. But you know who did pretty well? Michael quit. IDR Smith went 9 and 1 in the college or in the uh in the football picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. You can join that every week. You win great prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. We recommend all of them. Go check them out over at tunicatravel.com. Again, enter the football picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Over there, you can find our picks, our previews, our podcasts, our videos, everything about us, the social media stuff. Facebook, you can follow us on there. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on Facebook, hit that like button. Of course, share the show out with your friends. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Tell us what your picks are. Because, man, I need some help. Good gracious, six live in the morning. Uh, but put those picks on here. I want to see where you got the line, what your record is. Tell us tell us how you've been doing, man. Tell us everything about you. We want to know. We want to know what's up. All right. I don't have a lot of notes on my games this week. Okay. I'm feeling good about them because I felt good every week, and I don't know how... How about this? I don't feel as good about these as I have about the ones that I lost a bunch on. So maybe that means I should feel good about these. Does that does that matter? Does that? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Like I just I, I was so I I felt so good about those games last week. Well, the one you felt the best about you hit. Yeah, I hit that. So that's good. But I had some other ones that I felt pretty good about that did not hit. So. And I ended up losing, you know, 120 bucks last week. I'm like, man, like I just, uh, I cannot get caught up. I don't know what it is. Uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight games this week. Uh, literally every one of these is at minus 110 juice. Uh, how many games you got? I got six, and they're all 110. Okay. So we know exactly what that is. We'll tell what we're putting on each game as we go. And since I've got more than you, I will fire off first. Game number one for me, I am all over Ball State minus two and a half at home against Ohio. I'm putting $75 on it. Ohio, one and six against the spread so far this year. Ball State is five and two. Ball State is playing lights out right now. They look fantastic. And this is a team that has a ton of experience. Ohio has not looked right all year. I don't know what it is. So I'm all over Ball State. I'm getting less, or I'm giving up less than a field goal. Like I, I think Ball State can win this game by ten points. Okay. Who uh who you rolling with? SMU going to Houston. Okay. I think this SMU team is so much better than Houston. What uh what's the line you got? 14 and a half. You willing to give up 14 and a half? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Because I think they're going to easily beat them by three scores. Okay. Easily beat them by three scores. Give me $75 on it. 75 At SMU, understanding that uh, that they could be dealing with college game day next week. Listen, I don't remember how much it was. I'm going to find out, though. What's that? What's that? Give me one second. Um, I can't do it. I'm doing too many other things on my phone. Um, looking other stuff up. SMU, or Houston gave up like, like seventeen points to to UConn. To UConn, yeah, it was twenty four seventeen. What do you think SMU is gonna score? Just uh, give me you, a gander on what you think that team is gonna score. Team total. SMU forty five. Maybe. Let's see what the team total is. 
I guess we could do that right quick. I mean, we got we got time. It's all good. Everybody here wants to know. So <laughs> keep talking. Move on. All right. I, I love SMU. I think they're going to kill them. I think this Houston team is struggling to stay um, afloat. Yeah, I, I mean they got a lot of guys that are that are out. Yeah, and look, you, you got it pulled up there. There it is, right there. That's the first one on there. Forty. Forty. Okay. I think they'll blow past forty. I think you're probably right. Probably right. Let's move into game number two for me. Indiana is catching a point at Nebraska. It opened up Indiana minus two or minus two and a half in some spots, and people are all over Nebraska. Here's the deal. Adrian Martinez, still questionable, not likely that he plays this weekend. His backup, probably not going to play this weekend. Indiana is a good football team. Like, I understand that people may not understand that, but this is a good team. Tom Allen has got this team playing the way that he wants them to now. They are absolutely legit. Indiana, plus one at Nebraska. I'm putting 75 bucks on it. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where I want to go next. Okay. I went at SMU, right? Yeah. I think game day might be coming to Memphis, right? Yeah. I'm going to go the other half of that. Okay. Memphis, minus 10 and a half at Tulsa. Both these teams are on the road. I think both of them are going to win. I think both of them are going to cover. I think they're rolling. That's it. I like that. I like that. Tulsa has been pretty good this year in some spots. I um, mean, they gave SMU all they wanted. But, um, yeah, I yeah. just said. So give think, me, give me I'll, I'll take 50 on that one. 50 bucks on that. Okay. I'm good with it. Next one up for me. Let's go down to Atlanta. Okay. Troy is getting one and a half at Georgia State. Now, I understand Georgia State looked pretty good the last couple of weekends. But Troy is a different beast. Troy hadn't looked great, you know, all season. But in certain spots, when they feel slighted, they are, they, they can put up points with the best of them. And they went to South Alabama last week and beat them 37 to 13. I think they go to Atlanta. They cover this one and a half. I think they win the game outright. Uh, but I'm going to take that one and a half. I'm going to put 50 bucks on it at minus 110. Give me the Troy Trojans here. I like to bet against Clemson. Yeah, I haven't do. done bad betting against Clemson. No, so I'm going to still bet against Clemson. I'm taking all 33 and a half points that BC's getting. I think BC's offense can score. I don't know that they're going to score a ton. But I think they can score. Yeah. Clemson's offense hasn't scored a ton. Now they'll score a crap load against against BC. But are they going to score enough to beat them by 35, 34? It's a lot. Seems like a lot. Yeah, it does. I'm laying them. I'm taking them. What you got? 50 bucks? 50 so, bucks on that one. Sounds good. Next one up for me. I'm going down to Mobile, Alabama. And I'll tell you why. Because App State don't take no prisoners. App State minus 26 at South Alabama. South Alabama's not a good football team. In App State, everybody continues to make the line too short for them. And look, the only game that they have not covered this year was uh, against... My mind just went blank right in the middle of me saying that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, uh, uh, Charlotte. They okay. didn't cover Charlotte. But... South Alabama can't score. So, I mean, you get you get App State to, to 40 points. Like, there ain't no way South Alabama's scoring more than 14. So, I'm all over this. Um, yeah, I mean, good gracious. Good gracious. App State minus 26. I got 50 bucks on it minus, uh, minus 110. Baton got? Rouge. Baton Rouge. I think LSU is rolling. I think they're rolling. I listen. I respect the hell out of Auburn. Okay, I do not think this is going to be one of those games where LSU is going to come in here and just olay them and beat them by forty like they've been beating everybody else. Okay, that ain't happening. But I definitely think they can beat them by ten and a half. Is it ten and a half? Ten and a half. What do you think it is? I thought it was eleven. It's gone down, then, sir. If it's gone down, that's even better because I'm on the same side that you are. I've got Auburn at LSU. LSU minus 10 and a half. Uh, I think that Auburn will have trouble scoring. I think LSU will not. 
Uh, I've got 75 bucks on it. What, uh, what you got on it? Oh, 50. 50? All right. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll go on and, and do one more here. Okay. Washington State is going to Oregon. And I know how much you love Mike Leach. I do love Mike Leach. The Cougars have had Oregon's number here recently. Covered five straight against them. Four and one straight up the last five years. Washington State plus 14 looks like the perfect play here. And that's what I'm rolling with. Uh, I think people love Oregon a little too much. There's a little too much hype here. Oregon really should have gotten beat by Washington. Honestly. Because Washington was in control of that game. Now Oregon has to come back home. They got USC next week. There's talk of like possibly game day or ABC primetime coming to them. Like, Oregon's worried about other stuff besides Washington State, and that's where you can get got. So, I think Washington State will be able to put up points here. Give me all 14 of those. Washington State plus 14 at Oregon. I, I love this. Uh, I love this matchup here. I love this spot. This me is, too. Me this too. is a good spot for Pick, it. pick. like the pick. My last game, got two picks on it. All right. I never, ever, ever do over-unders. You know that. I true. never give them out. I bet on them a lot. I don't ever give them out. <laughs> I almost said what I said on the other podcast that we did. Going to the horseshoe. Okay. I'm taking all 14 of those points from Wisconsin. Okay. And then? 14 and a half, right? I just saw 14. But let me... It's right there. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, 14. you got 14. I, I, so I didn't pick it as one of my bets, but I mean, you can get that thing at 14 and a half, 15 in other places. I don't think you can, Gary. I, it, I'm telling you. Okay. Maybe you can. <laughs> I don't know. So take, take the half point. No, I'm going to take the 14 because that's what I see it at. That's what I got it at. Okay. Plus 14. <clears throat> I am nothing if I'm not fair. Okay. I'm fair if I'm not nothing. Yeah. Anyway, my other bet, I'm going real slow and I'm a little scattered and I'm not paying attention. I apologize. What's up? What's your total on this one? 50. All right. My other bet, 50 bucks. I'm taking the over. 50 and a half. Over 50 and a half? Over 50 and a half. I do believe this Ohio State freight train is going to come and I think they can score. I think Wisconsin's going to score. Tit for tat. Okay. Okay. Is that is that all of your bets? That's all my bets. Dang, I still got three left. I don't know how. I told you I was getting six. Well, because uh, you you and I both did Auburn. But then you did another one. Uh, yeah, we did LSU, and I did another one. But I don't know. I don't know. You got me. Go all on. right, let me run through them right quick. FIU minus two and a half at Middle Tennessee State. Florida International has got it rolling right now. MTSU. There are spots where they look okay. I don't think this is going to be one of them. Yes, they are at home. That does not mean anything for this team. Sometimes they cover home, sometimes they don't. Uh, but Florida International is rolling right now. So I'm getting them at less than a field goal. Uh, I think name recognition matters here. People think of MTSU as still being like a really good football team. They're not. They got that one upset win over Marshall. That ain't nothing. So I, give me Florida International. Give me Butch Davis. I'm all over that one. I've got... Oh, no, I've only got two more. Sorry. Uh, this I was about to say. One. Yeah, because the last one I had written down was LSU. So, okay. Um, so, 50 bucks on Florida International at minus two and a half over MTSU. And last bet. I am going to take the Arkansas Razorbacks, which is a terrible bet. I understand. Nobody wants to bet that. I got it. But I'm getting 32, and Alabama does not have Tua, and... They are not going to try and go out and run the same kind of offense that they run with Tua. And even if they tried, obviously against Tennessee, they were not capable of doing that. I, I think Tennessee's a little better than Arkansas. But are they that much better? I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I think that Arkansas will be able to put up some points on this Alabama defense, uh, especially late. I look for this to be somewhere around like a 41-14 to 14 kind of game, which still gets you inside of that 32 number. So, yeah, give me 
Arkansas plus the 32 for 50 bucks. This is just how we're different. How's this different? I, we, I would never do this. Never bet on Arkansas? I would never bet against my team. Oh. I just never. But to, I've ever. done it so many times. It is what it is. I, I but, see an edge here. But I believe in I believe in karma and gambling gods and bad juju. And this is why Tua's ankle got broken. This is not. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely why. And because they knew I was going to bet against no, them the next week? somebody else bet against them that shouldn't have. Oh, that's insane. I'm telling you. That's just absurd. Tell, you don't believe me. That's just this shit absurd. shit happens. It's real. All right. We've got... Uh, just don't bet against your team. <laughs> Ever. I'm not betting on them to lose. I just don't think they're going to happen. Do. They are not going to lose to Arkansas. They get out of my face with this. They got... We what's got, that money, we got, what's that money line look like? We got TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast coming up. What's uh, what's your money line showing? I can get plus five seven, yeah. 5750. Yeah, 5750. Plus 5750. Go, go on and hop on that. I might. All right, go ahead. Don't test me. Okay. I'll throw money away on anything. Yeah, you bet. We, we, did, we both did on Northwestern last week. You, you spent the weekend with me. TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He jumps in with us to discuss college football picks and leans and everything else. Go subscribe to this podcast, the Three Dog Thursday podcast. And this is TJ right now. This week and every week, of course, we bring in TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ. How are things in Tampa, my brother? Uh, we're doing all right coming off the Buccaneer bye week, getting ready to head up in your part of the world to Nashville for the Bucks and the Tennessee Titans. But I know we want to talk a little college football first. And I, I got to say up front, thank you to Chris Giannini for coming on the podcast last week with me on Three Dog Thursday and taking uh, the Saints in the NFL. Because other than that pick, there was not much else redeeming value <laughs> to what we were giving you on Three Dog Thursday College or the NFL, although we were kind of all in agreement, weren't we, on Arizona State uh, at Utah getting all those points in the Pac-12, but, but Arizona State just could not score as that game went on uh, to, we, to keep it close enough. Yeah. We got close, though. We, we were right there. We were on the right side. If they hadn't fumbled that, uh, that punt at the end of the ball game, <laughs> we were there. I mean, at 14-3 to three is what it looked like it was just going to sit on, and – you know, and then they fumble a punt and they give up a 32-yard run. It is what it is. Yeah, uh, well, it is, it is what it is, and uh, we had some other we had some other near misses. They don't they don't pay out the near misses, so that's okay. I know I know you boys <laughs> headed up to uh, the Windy City, and you were officially kryptonite on both Northwestern and the Bears. What in the world was going on with the the lack of offense for the Wildcats? I mean, you can understand that Ohio State's yeah. got much more talent, but the Bears. Uh, you talk about Ohio, uh, about Arizona State not being able to score. Uh, it, it was a bad weekend there yeah. in Chicago. I hope you had fun. I hope you had some adult beverages and some good company because it was not a lot of good football apparently you, last you know weekend. What we, for you. you know what we did do? We watched rugby. We, <laughs> was, at, now listen, hang on. We didn't just watch rugby. At three thirty in the morning, okay, the Lord's now, time who? in Chicago, oh. we were at a bar. They said, <laughs> "Hey, we normally close at two. But we're staying open until like six a.m. because England like, and Australia. Yeah, the rugby tournament, the World Cup's going on. Okay. You know about this? Who was on the Winning Cures podcast last week, trying to tell you that while I was in London, all that was on the TV <laughs> is this World Cup of rugby? And whether you believed me or whether your audience believed me, you don't. You didn't maybe believe me a week ago. You believe me now that they care about this worldwide. Oh, yeah. We don't care, but you were you were relaying to me they were singing songs and fight songs in the middle of the night in this bar oh, over yes. the World Cup of Rugby, right? We we saw we saw the England Aussie game, <laughs> and I will tell you that that is two groups of people that when they get a little lubed up, uh, they are looking to throw down. I felt like I was back in Boston. Uh, I just thought, man, are you these saying guys it might the drop of it hat. might rival Alabama LSU lathered up in Tuscaloosa? Oh, it, it, uh, it, it, surpa it surpassed that. It surpassed that by a lot. Yeah, it was it by was a lot. Level. It was oh, very enjoyable it. for for a group of guys sitting in the corner just having no clue what's going on, but laughing every minute of the way. 
Yeah. I try. I tried to tell you, and I know we'll move on to the college picks here because the audience is going, where's the picks? Where's the underdog? <laughs> uh, that, that I was in the press box at the stadium in London for the Buccaneers Panthers game in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the billion dollar stadium. We're up, we're up in the press level, and there had to be 25 guys crowded around the TV watching the finish to the Scotland-Japan World Rugby game, hanging on every second on every play. So, again, this is a big deal worldwide. Uh, they care about that version of, of football. We care about our version of football, and that brings us back to the college game, doesn't it? Absolutely. So, of course, big week in college. Uh Let's let's go ahead and just jump into the biggest game of the weekend that lost a little bit of luster thanks to an underdog that none of us called last week. Uh, <laughs> Illinois beats Wisconsin. Now Wisconsin gets to go to Columbus. Uh, yes. Uh, it, tell tell me what you think here. I mean, it, it opened up. I, I, I am looking. I'm looking at that line, and I am saying that is attractive because everybody has to believe that Ohio State's going to clobber them, Wisconsin, after they lost to Illinois. And, and Wisconsin's good. We've talked about this on your show. I still don't know days later what happened in Champaign. I, I, I mean, you guys, uh, you're much, you're much uh, in-depth on all of this. No, uh, how about Illinois did not run a play in the red zone in the entire game yeah. and yet scored 20-plus points without running a play in the red zone? It uh, it's all turnovers. And turnovers, yes, yes, but uh, but Paul Christ with the clock management allowing the play clock uh, to not wind down under 15 seconds on several occasions on their second to last drive, giving Illinois time on their final drive on their on their last drive, second to last drive of the game. Yeah. They're leaving 15, leaving 10, leaving 11 on the play clock, and Illinois used every second to get into field goal range and kick the field goal. I just like as we're pointing forward here that this is a perfect spot for everybody to give up on them and for them to fight hard and give Ohio State problems. I don't know that they're going to win the game, but I, I, I'm looking strongly for Three Dog Thursday purposes at on Wisconsin in that matchup at Columbus. Chris, are you shaking your head? I cannot see you yes, right sir. now. Are you shaking your head yes or no? What oh, are you yeah. shaking your head? No? No, we're, no, listen, you know how I feel about Wisconsin. I have waxed poetic enough about my love for them and their style of football and uh, and and I kind of really love them in the spot. I love them. That's it. all right, TJ. We you you heard we went to see Ohio State last week. Uh, they can be got on the lines of scrimmage. Like it's they're they're not overwhelming and dominant. Like they're insanely athletic and there's a lot of speed. Oh, they're they're crazy fast. There's nobody in the country yeah. faster than them. Nobody. But as far as wow, just, now that's saying that's saying something. Oh yeah. Oh, no, that, that's absolutely 100% legit. But if you keep the ball away from them, I watched Northwestern with a putrid offensive line in really slow running backs open holes up that I could have ran through. Now, I would have gotten tackled at like two yards. <laughs> these guys got tackled at seven yards. The guys in Wisconsin will take these to the house. Yeah. All right. So now, we'll I, I'm not saying they're going to do it all the time. But the best way to slow a good offense like Ohio State down is to not play defense. Just keep the ball, hold it all day long, turn into Army. And instead of trying to rush for 40 yards a touch like they have done on some of these, just just get seven, eight yards and fall down. And then get seven, grind eight more them. and fall more down. Yep, grind, grind them, work the clock. Let's see. That's, so that's going to be a big topic, obviously, on the show that matchup in the Big Ten. And, and for the Big Ten and the college football playoff, this is obviously large. They, they wanted that to be a more stellar Wisconsin-Ohio State game. But that, that tandem of games at the end of the year for the Buckeyes where they're playing Penn State at home and at Michigan to end the season, that's, uh, you know, that's obviously large for the Big Ten and the college football playoff. But this, one, this is one that may give the, the Buckeyes some trouble. We'll well, see. You got that right. So let's uh, let's move in to, uh, before, we, before we get out of the college segment, uh, let's talk about Texas TCU. This line opened up with TCU as, what, a two-point favorite, two-and-a-half-point favorite, somewhere around there? And, right. And they are now the underdog. Uh, tell me what you, what you think here. Texas had, had trouble with Kansas last week. TCU, of course, went and lost uh, at Kansas State. Uh, but... You know, possible look ahead spot. I mean, we'll we'll see what happens here. What uh, what do you think's going on with the Longhorns and the TCU? Uh, and the 
Ooh, TCU back to back <laughs> losses. And again, this is one that it's almost like a theme for this week late in October. Doesn't make sense, but I still like it. I, I don't know, and I've seen some of the highlights and watched some of that game. What what in the world? Uh, Texas may be just overlooking Kansas. What do we make of they couldn't stop them uh, even at home late in the game over and over again? Uh, that does not bode well uh, to me. I, I think TCU looks at this as a galvanizing moment for their season that they can maybe pull the upset. And it's fascinating to me. You guys know the numbers better than I do. But for that line to have opened at two and a half and already early in the week, it shifted the other way. So that means a lot of the money obviously came in on Texas right away when they put that line out. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, the Froggies, to me, are attractive here. I cannot fully explain why. Some of it is just watching Texas's defense, which obviously got shredded by Oklahoma, but Oklahoma shreds everybody. Uh, I don't know that I trust Texas's defense in this situation either. I think TCU could get them. That'll be another game that we look at on Three Dog Thursday. I don't know that I would trust Texas's defense anytime at all, ever. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I seriously, I don't know that there's an offense in the league that's not scoring 35. To 40 Look, the years. whole Big 12 right now, can you trust any of the defenses, maybe with the exception of Baylor? I was just, the best I was just defensive about to say, play, careful. right? The best defensive play of the year in the conference is whoever loosened the wheels on the Sooner Schooner last week in the game <laughs> with West Virginia. That's the best defense all year is derailing the Schooner so far, boys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, as far as numbers go, what is it? Fifty? No, uh, eighty-eight yeah. percent on Texas right now. Yeah, 80, the whole world is back in Texas. Nobody foresees TCU um, winning this game. So, and and that may be, you know, that may lead to good things uh, for TCU. Uh, but we have gone back and done some research, and we don't know that that necessarily matters at this point. <laughs> so, so we'll see what happens. Um, well. We, uh, we we know that they will line up and play the game. We know it's different seasons and even a different coaching staff, but TCU has beaten them the last two times in Fort Worth head-to-head over the course of the last four years. Oh, until so last let's year. Let's see if they make it three for three. Yeah, they've beaten them uh, uh, four straight games yeah, before Gary, last year. Gary Patterson, still really good coach. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. All right. All right, that'll wrap up the college segment, of course, with the TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Go and grab him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. Make sure you subscribe to Three Dog Thursday Podcast on any of your favorite podcast apps, Spotify, uh, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, etc. Go follow the man on Twitter. Tell him we sent you. Leave him some nice reviews. TJ, we appreciate you being here, buddy. Always good to be with you, boys. Gary, you're going to be on with me on the podcast making some I picks. I certainly am. And Anthony Becht of ESPN's College Football, the former West Virginia Mountaineer, the former NFL number one pick tight end. Uh, he is going to be on the show, and I'm looking forward to talking some college football with him. So it's going to be a lot of fun on Three Dog Thursday. Thank you, boys. Absolutely. All right, we appreciate TJ hopping in here. Of course, Three Dog Thursday podcast is the name of his show. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. Uh, all of that stuff I already said, but I want to make sure we put it out there. Go leave him a review. Subscribe to the podcast. He's got a great show. comes out every Thursday. It discusses only underdogs. Dude is fantastic. He comes on with us every week. We always appreciate him. Of course, go enter the Football Picks Contest over at winningcureseverything.com. You can go to the Gambling Picks page <coughs> and keep track of every pick that we make from the beginning of the season to the end. You can make or you can keep track of every pick that we've made for all four seasons we've been doing this. So go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on our social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Leave some comments. Share the show out with your buddies, of course, and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe on the podcast as well. The show brought to you, of course, Tunica, Mississippi, South Premier Sports Gambling Destination. Tunicatravel.com is the place to get more information about them. I think that's going to wrap it up. Let's... uh. Let's get some winners this week. Good luck to everybody. We will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.